So when I say Bowling Green, Ohio, what is the first thing that you think of? What? OK, yeah, maybe cornfields or BGSU or our brutally cold winters. But did any of you think of the word beautiful? <laughs> my name is Logan Brown, and I've actually lived in uh, this small town of Bowling Green, Ohio my entire life. And while some of your immediate reactions might be, oh, that poor kid, he's never seen the world. He doesn't know anything. I'm just going to urge you to wait a second. Because believe it or not, Bowling Green is responsible for igniting my passion and career in photography. So for the past four years, I've just been taking photos, as often as I could, wherever I could. And it started just as a, as a hobby, right? Just something that I kind of enjoyed doing. It was a way to document my adventures, right? But over time, it turned into a career. And to this day, I've gained almost 50,000 followers on Instagram. And I've worked with brands like Avis Rental Cars, Daniel Wellington, phone companies, and even the Ohio Tourism Board. And the craziest thing is that all of these brands wanted to work with me after seeing my pictures of Northwest Ohio. Some of you may be thinking, do we live in the same Northwest Ohio? Because the one that I live in is just ugly. And I, I get that, OK? Especially on a day like today. But I think there is so much beauty that surrounds Bowling Green and its surrounding areas. We just get a, need to get a little bit creative to find it. So growing up as a kid, I always loved the outdoors, right? I love nature. I love just exploring. So, um, when I got my license at 16 years old, my first, first thought was, let's drive towards the Maumee River. And I got there, and I, I kid you not, this place blew my mind. I was like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Some of you might be chuckling, because this is how the Maumee River looks <laughs> on a good day, right? <laughs> um, but it didn't matter to me. I loved every single second of it. And I'd always be running around with my iPhone 4, snapping pictures. And at first, they were. They were bad. They were really, really bad. But it didn't matter to me. I loved it. right? Um, and over time, I, I kept taking pictures and getting better. And I realized that if I was in the right place at the right time with the right ideas and the right subject, this is how I was able to make the Maumee River look. And over time, I realized that I had this affinity for photography and that, that I was getting pretty good at it, too. So today, I want to kind of give you a behind-the-scenes look of how I shoot my photos, how I edit my photos, and how I'm able to capture beauty that other people cannot see. So when I first started getting into photography, I needed to accept one thing, and that was that I did not live by the ocean. There was no crazy mountain ranges in my backyard, no cool waterfalls. All I had was Bowling Green, Ohio. All I had was flat, right? Um, but while my other friends were complaining about how flat Ohio was, I realized that this gave the most incredible sunrises and sunsets. Like we could actually watch the sun dip below the horizon. And this is something that is not, not normal that you would see in any other place. And yeah, um, I also found this park in Toledo called Sidecut. And most people, when they see Sidecut, they think of the deer, because it is just overpopulated with deer, right? And this is how most people would capture the deer there. But the deer were super normalized with humans, right? So I could get super intimate portraits of the deer. I could really step out and find something unique and find a way to capture these deer in their natural habitat that is something completely different than what other people could do. Yeah, and maybe it's not 70 degrees all year long, right? We wish, but if I put in the winter, if I put on a coat or two or 12, right, <laughs> I could actually step out and capture some amazing moments in the dead of winter, moments that most people would not even know exist. And I think something that we all kind of take for granted is that we have all four seasons, right? And this is something that is not, not true in all other places. But this has given me some amazing creative abilities. So I've been able to capture the same tree in all of its seasons and years and, and all of its different conditions. And every time I go to a park, if I go to this road here at the park, every time I go, it's going to look a little bit different, just depending on the season that we're in. And that's something super unique. Um, and this photo, it's two different photos taken at the same place just a couple months apart. Right? This is something that we can really capitalize here in Bowling Green. So one of the reasons my photos might look good to you is because I get lucky, or I really take advantage of what we have in Ohio. But also there's something called composition. And I compose my shots very, very strategically and intentionally to create the best looking photo for you. And composition is just a fancy way to say where everything in the photo is. It's the background. It's the foreground. It's the subject. Um, and composition is a very stylistic, personal thing that changes from photographer to photographer. 
But also it has some very scientific elements that if you follow the rules of composition, you can actually, your brain's gonna naturally think that photo is more appealing. You're gonna have a natural affinity for that photo. So the first one I wanna talk about is rule of thirds. And rule of thirds is a very um, simple one. It's very common, but also very scientific. So this is dividing your photo into thirds, both horizontally and vertically, and placing your subject at the intersection of those points or on the line. So for example, the shot of a bird, right? It's nothing special, but placing it on the rule of thirds really makes it stand out. Or even the eye of this deer, or even just the horizon. And the rule of thirds is actually super cool because it's a simplified version of something called the golden ratio. And the golden ratio is an extremely complicated mathematical formula that honestly I know nothing about, <laughs> okay? And that's okay, but what I do know is that tons of things in nature um, possess these same ratios. So for example, a rose. This is why we can look at a rose and we can all see beauty in it. It's because that ratio. And it's not just as small things like the rose, it's also hurricanes or even our galaxy. So if we can take all of these natural beauty beautiful ratios and place them inside our photos, that's gonna give that photo a natural affinity in your eye. Next one is something called leading lines. And leading lines that help are lines that help guide your eye to the subject of the photo, whether man-made or natural. And uh, here's, I'm just gonna show you some examples. Um, so for example, the train tracks, leading lines going straight into the photo. Or even the line of the path of the deer, right? And these are just lines that help you guide your eye to what you're trying to see. It could be light rays, it could be trees, it could be whatever. The next one I wanna talk about is framing. And framing, when you think of framing, most people think of picture frames, right? And what do picture frames do? Picture frames help that photo look better. It makes it stand out. But what if we could actually frame a photo within a photo? So you could take this very literally and throw like a frame on the ground. This is actually a mirror that I threw on a forest floor, right? But you could also take it a bit more abstractly and shoot through something to really emphasize that subject. Even having just trees slightly out of focus in the background is gonna really frame that photo. And even just some silhouetted leaves at the top is gonna really help that photo stand out. The last one is symmetry. Symmetry is something that we all might be familiar with, but symmetry, um, our eyes are always look, looking for repetition. It's looking for patterns. It's looking for ways to make sense of our outside world. So when we can find symmetry in a photo, it's gonna make that photo look so much better in our eyes. And what's really cool about this is you don't need to just use one rule for one photo. When I shoot, oftentimes I'll use several different rules of composition to make that photo look the best it can. So for example, this deer that we've seen a couple times, right? Not only did I shoot it with the rule of thirds, but I also had some leading lines going into the photo, lines that you might not have even seen. And I also had some subtle framing in the top and in the bottom to make that deer stand out. The next thing I wanna talk about is editing. And editing can be a touchy subject for some of you because a lot of times I'll have conversations with people and this is kind of how it goes. It's like, look at this photo. They're like, wow, that's so beautiful. I'm like, thank you. And they're like, did you edit it? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh. And I'm like, what do you mean, oh? They're like, well, it's like fake. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's not fake. First of all, um, photography is an art, right? Every photographer has their own um, creative choices that they get to make and editing is one of those. Also another one, have you guys ever taken a photo on your phone? Yeah, a couple of you, cool. <laughs> but have you ever taken that same photo and you look at it and you're like, wow, that's honestly not as good as like what I'm seeing with my eye? Well, that's true with every single camera in the world. No camera can fully capture a moment. So that's when editing comes in. And editing is storytelling, right? Editing is when I edit a photo, I'm trying to evoke the same emotion in you as the emotion that I saw when I clicked that shutter. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about three types of editing today. And light editing, heavy editing, and composite editing. And this is gonna give you a little behind the scenes of how I edit my photos, and then you also might get a little behind the scenes on how some other photographers might edit their photos. So the first one is light editing. And light editing is the most common type of editing for me, is this is very simple edits, right? Just minor lighting adjustments, a little saturation, a little contrast. And this is the before, and that's the after. Honestly, not too much of a difference, right? Um, or here, this I just, amazing, um, sunrise over Monument Valley, but um, a little dark, so I just brightened it up and added a bit more color to it. Very light edits. Um, but next, there's something called heavy editing, and heavy editing is where you get to have a little bit more fun with it. So me and my best friend went to um, Hocking Hills, Ohio, right? Um, have you guys been? It's pretty awesome. And I was, it was autumn, right, or fall, or whatever you wanna call it. We were driving there, and I was just picturing this amazing beauty. I was expecting like beautiful oranges in the leaves, and reds, and yellows. And I got there, and this is what I saw. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? I was like so pumped for this shot. But then I was like, you know what, maybe I can have a little bit of fun. 
So heavy editing is where you can change colors, dramatically fix exposure. It's really pushing a photo to its limits. So I can create that scene that I saw in my head. Another one here, this is Monument Valley. Uh, we saw it during a storm, but I was like, how cool would that be if that was a sunset? And then I did it, because I can. <laughs> And then also this deer, we've seen this deer a couple times. So this is the original raw shot, but I took it and it was such a beautiful moment. But the picture, honestly, was just not doing it justice. So I started with a light edit and I just kept going and going. Next thing I knew, it was a heavier edit, but this is how I was feeling when I took that photo. The next one I want to talk about is composition editing. And composite editing is when you add different photos together. It's taking different elements of different photos and creating one. So this is a sunset in uh, Bowling Green, Ohio, but I added a mountain that I saw in Utah. I erase the sky, um, add some foreground to it, erase that mountain, color adjust, and ta-da, completely brand new photo, right? Um, another example, this is at Mommy Bay. Um, just taking this cool photo at uh, sunset, um, cropping it, adding it, picking a, a Milky Way galaxy that I saw in the Rocky Mountains, throwing that in there, adding a guy, adding a shooting star, and look at that, it's a brand new photo. Pretty cool, right? Um, so anyway, those are how do you do composite editing, and that is a rare form for me, but still wanted to kind of show you um, some behind the scenes of that. But honestly, no matter how you edit a photo, no matter how you shoot a photo, whether if you're into photography or not, I think it's super important that we slow down and appreciate the beauty that's around us, even in Bowling Green, Ohio. So now when I say Bowling Green, I hope that you might think of other words. Thank you so much.